I'm gonna get hit from nothing. Wizard's gone. On him. We're trying to get on him right now. Let's jump right into the Hatchet Ice Gauntlet build. Good for all content. Solo play, group play, duels, PvE content like Expeditions, uh, Outpost Rush, and Wars. I frequently get asked, why does this work? Do you take intelligence? How do you hit so hard? And why are you able to kill me when naked? Uh, let's answer all of that. The reason I run this over Gravity Well and Great X is due to the niche perks that make insane differences. So I don't get any healing um, from my Ice Gauntlet bar or damage. Not, not very much damage anyway. However, I do get a 7 second Ice Shower over a 3 to 4 second Gravity Well. And the way to win in melee as the Hatchet is to be able to lock down the movement of enemies. So let's go over what we take for this. Let's go over the attributes. So this is what we look like without any food on. However, once we use our carry cake, this is our stat caps. We take 200 strength for 10% bonus damage on stunned, slowed, or averted enemies. We take 50 dexterity for the 5% crit, and we take our dump stat of constitution for the 20% increase to armor as well as our obviously quite high health pool of 12.1k currently. I only have focus in here, as that is a useless attribute on the ring. However, we take hardy and keen awareness, as these are the best perks available for us, especially in heavy. As in heavy, we can still get in three dodges with hardy. It's very difficult to get in a ring that has two great attributes with still hardy and keen awareness. You can get a ring that has hardy and keen awareness in Lazarus, however that is based off your watermark, and it is very difficult to increase the watermark on jewelry. I am running an ill-gotten gain earring, as it's very difficult to replace this. It's just really good. We are running an Infinity Crystal, as it's also very difficult to replace this. However, I eventually will, when I can get a necklace that has both Divine and Health, with useful attributes, and it has a gem slot. We are running Heavy, as I do not want to get nuked in uh, PvP. Uh, so Heavy is the way to go, unless you are running Light specifically to gank people, um, then I guess you can go Light. I definitely have fun playing light when I'm playing naked and I get that 20% bonus to damage and that is why I can hit so hard when naked. However, heavy is definitely the way to go um, as I would like to stay in the fight as long as possible as I'm able to survive for a very long time. The setup is extremely tanky and durable when you play it right. We are running keen and rogue for now until we can get maybe a legendary that has something like Keen, Rogue, and Vicious, or Keen, Rogue, Keenly Empowered, or maybe Keen, Vicious, and Keenly Empowered. All of those perks are definitely best in slot. I am running a Cruelty Gem from Malachite for that 12% bonus to slow, stun, and ridded enemies. For the gem on the Ice Gauntlet, I am running a diamond. Uh, the reason I'm running a diamond over an opal is because when I put down the pylon, if I do a dodge and the pylon shoots, it takes no bonus damage uh, with an opal for some reason. So I'm assuming it's because the pylon does not have a stamina bar. Um, so then it's based off the pylon's health. So the diamond does increase the damage of the pylon, however the opal does not. So we are running a diamond on the ice gauntlet. Uh, useful perks would be things like Keen and Healing Tomb. Healing Tomb will give you 10% uh, health when you use Entombed. However, I have only seen Healing Tomb on one piece of gear in the entire game and it was Bind on Pickup, so it's extremely difficult to get that perk. 
The reason we are not running Void Bent is because Void Bent will be obsolete when crafters can create anything useful with resilience, uh, such as resilient with refreshing. Uh, any legendary piece that has something like that will make Void Bent go away or get replaced. So ideally, if crafting catches up and we get the god rolls, we can have something such as resilient, refreshing, and raging torrent. Or, you know, resilient, refreshing with literally anything. That will be our best in slot. For food, I'm using carrot cake to reach my stat caps, as that is the most cost-effective tier 5 food uh, for stats currently around. At the time of me making this, carrot cake is only 35 gold each, and this makes it extremely, extremely cost-effective and will save you a lot of money over time. For consumables, I typically just use an infused health potion, hearty meal, and infused regen potion. And I'm running powerful mana potions as I rarely ever run out of mana, and uh, I'm just saving up my tier 5s as I literally never run out of tier 4s as I don't really need these quite often, and I get plenty of mana back from a tier 4. Okay, so let's go over perks that would be okay uh, for this hatchet. Things that would be okay, but not as good, would be perks like Keenly Jagged, which applies a bleed, and things such as the light and heavy attack bonus damage from Enchanted. Uh, these are okay, but in my opinion, they're not quite as good. And I had a friend that was trying out my build with Keenly Jagged, uh, because he believed that is counted as a debuff, which would give our exploitation perk another uh, possible boost if we can't find a different debuff. However, I do not believe a bleed is considered a debuff. I believe that is just considered a damage over time effect. So I would not recommend getting Keenly Jagged if you can get one of the more important perks. So let's go over the weapon mastery tree of the hatchet. We are running Relentless Fury, as this lasts for four attacks rather than one attack from light attack spamming. So definitely be mixing in heavy attacks for Relentless Fury rather than spamming light attacks over and over with accumulated power, as this will net you more damage overall. Uh, this perk is useless in my opinion, and the reason why we don't take uh, all of these, so Enrage Strikes, Accumulated Power, is simply because we do not have enough points after we go into the Throwing Tree for Exploitation. In this tree you also get 5% more crit, which is very nice. So everything in Raging Torrent, everything in Berserk, Feral Rush, Against All Odds, Fortifying Strikes, Relentless Fury, and exploitation. For the Ice Gauntlet, the most important abilities are Ice Shower and Entombed. Take everything in these for sure, as they're very nice. Definitely take Defiant Freeze, as 20% Fortify is amazing. I love taking 20% less damage for two seconds or you know however long with an Infinity Crystal on. And this is an okay perk, or you could swap it out for Frozen Touch. Either one work, it's not really too important. Blocking stamina is definitely the way to go. Um, when people are tunneling you and you don't have Berserk to you know, put in some damage or you don't have Entombed up, blocking stamina will allow you to tank like a beast as long as no one heavy attacks you or uses a very, very slow, hard-hitting stamina ability such as Executioner. So when you have blocking stamina up, you can basically tank um, almost as well as a shield as long as no one is hitting you on the back and you're just blocking some melee players. I am just taking these two perks as it's quite nice to have um, Cold Reach and Critical Rejuvenation. Thank you guys for watching. If you would like to see the build in action as well as a funny video, please be sure to check out New World 1VX Outpost Rush as Naked Man Part 2.